And I think we're good there. Okay, so um, to begin with, welcome to the Node.js, uh, the Denver Node.js meetup. We're all remote these days because, you know, reasons. Um, so thank you everybody for joining in. Um, it is tough for me to be able to say, but unfortunately this is gonna be the last of the, the Denver Node.js meetups. It's been really tough for, for us to find speakers. Uh, we've had to skip several, several months this year and a couple last year. Um, and I don't wanna have to just do every talk myself or invite the same people over and over and over again. So um, I will be unfortunately shutting the meetup down after this. That being said, there is a wonderful community of meetups still in Denver, especially around JavaScript, uh, Node.js and, uh, and programming. And so I highly recommend uh, joining Denver Devs, the Slack community, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, there's like what, over 7,000, 8,000 people now? Uh, times two, dude. We're like almost 13,000, I think. Oh my gosh, so many people. And everyone is super willing to help out, super friendly. And, uh, and there's a meetup uh, channel there and that will advertise out all the great you know, places to hang out. And of course, if you want to just say hi, uh, hang out with me or anybody else, um, we're available all over the internet, but especially on Denver Devs. So uh, with that message being said, um, I want to open it up. Is there any announcements, community announcements? As Kyle usually loves to say, going once, going twice, sold to all of us. All right, um, I am streaming this out to Twitch. So everyone who is on Twitch watching this live, uh, welcome. We, um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in chat and I'll forward them on to the, the speakers. Um, what we're going to be doing today is, uh, is something really special. We've done it several times in the past. Um, it's going to be a front-end framework showdown. So we have a, a server um, and uh, that's going to store special places. And our speakers are going to show off their chosen frameworks it, to of how to consume uh, this sing singular same API. It's going to be the same app, different frameworks, and, uh, and that's it. We're going to have Kyle Coberly. Um, we're going to have Cassandra Torsk and uh, uh, Berto. I forgot your last name. Ortega. 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 <laughs> oh, my gosh. What's wrong with me? Um, OK, so uh, you are not here to listen to me talk all night. So with that. I am going to uh, to give you all over to our speakers, which I haven't asked you yet. Do you have an order that you want to you want to speak in? Berto's going first. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> See how that gets done. Is Chad going to introduce the API, or is that no? Oh, okay. No. Okay. Never I mean, mind. forget I said that. Chad, do you Chad do you want to introduce the API? <laughs> No, but if you have API questions, feel free to ask them. Um, the API was great. The API. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I will take some time to kind of, um, uh, let me see, I'll share my screen. And I can't seem to be able to share my screen. I don't think I've used Zoom sharing my screen. So um, with that being said, I think, um, I, I think you should have permissions you. too. No, I think it's just, you know how um, I have to like quit and come back in. So um, Kyle, I volunteer you to uh, <laughs> go first now. Nope, uh, just deflecting that right over to Cass. All right, be right back. We'll see if, um, it, if I can share my screen. And if so, then we'll go. Um, cool. Yeah, maybe. I can't see all of you anymore, so. Um, I, I can oh. see your screen. 
Okay, great. Um, let me make this bigger so that I can actually see. Okay, awesome. Um, give me a thumbs up if volume is okay and you can see my screen. I got a couple of thumbs up. Great, awesome, cool. So um, this is the app. I'm not sure all of ours are gonna look the same, um, but maybe. <laughs> right now, um, what you're seeing is um, an app. It's got a header, um, subheader, and then we're seeing like a little card in the middle there. And it says Voicebox Denver. So what this is, is it's an app that lists um, places that um, we used to haunt maybe before the pandemic or maybe in years past, um, but basically favorite places. Right now there's only one place um, in that list. And so we're just seeing one, one lonely card. We can't do anything with it. It's just sitting there, that's it. I um, am using view three um, to uh, build this app and I'm not gonna live code it because um, that just seems like a lot of energy and I wanna be a little bit more calm with y'all. So um, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through um, some branches and this is the base branch. What you just saw is the base branch. Um, First off, let's check out how I'm actually serving this. So normally, you know, you like run NPM start and your app starts. Um, well, this is actually using the Vue CLI service to, um, to run the app, which is kind of nice. So if I go here, um, I gotta find, let's see, I'm right here. It's super simple. You use the Vue CLI to even create the app and you can choose to be in Vue 2 or Vue 3. Um, you can also choose all other kinds of things to generate with. So you can choose if you wanna use a router or if you wanna use state management, or if you would like um, built-in testing, they, they like have Cypress and then tests that they'll just like generate built-in with you for you. Obviously you have to write the tests yourself, but they're all ready to go. Um, but to actually run the app, I'm just running npm serve. Um, let's make sure that's still working. Cool, let's dig into the code a bit. Um, so let's start off here. Cass, can you can you uh, zoom in a little bit? Is oh, that a little perfect. bit better? <laughs> right when I looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's not really legible. Cool. Thanks, folks. Um, this is our main JS. If you have worked in Vue before, then you're probably familiar with this file um, being where you like kind of instantiate your app. Well, in Vue 3, we're really just kind of calling an existing method or a hook if you or something, you know, like it, it's a method that already exists. Um, passing in the app, we're telling it we want to use the store. Uh, we're, we're telling it we're using a router, and then we're mounting it on um, the specified DOM element. Um, for example, let's see, right here is where that app is going to live. Um, so it's pretty close. It's just kind of a new syntax. No worries there. Um, app view is kind of like the uh, starting point for our actual, um, like what we actually see. Um, in the code. So view is kind of fancy because, um, or rather I like it because you can have everything in like everything in one file. You'll have your HTML, just like what's in this template. You can also use pub. Um, you'll have your script in here. You can also use TypeScript um, if you don't want to just use JavaScript. Um, and then you can have your styles in the same file. Um, you can use CSS or whatever you'd like here. Um, it's pretty simple to just change it up. Obviously, you'll need the, um, the power from Webpack or whatever you're using for a bundler to actually run this stuff, but um, actually writing it is no big deal. Um, I'll come back to this, um, but I kind of just want to uh, give you a rundown of, of how everything's looking. You'll notice that um, in here I'm saying map state from Vuex. Vuex is our state management tool. You can use other things, but it's common to use um, Vuex. And it lives in our store. Um, on our, if you look over at our file tree, index um, is where I have everything living right now. You can actually have everything living in different files for organization, but because the app's so small, it's really not necessary in this um, situation, but you can have a file for mutations, you can have modules, whatever you'd like. Um, it looks pretty familiar uh, to Redux, only it's very compact. Um, you don't need all kinds of files to just do one thing. Um, the main thing we need to look at is places. Um, and you'll notice this is just a state property. We are using a mutation 
um, to set places. And you'll notice I'm not copying state. I'm just mutating it directly. That's totally cool in, in view. And then I have an action, um, which is the function that actually does our API call. Um, and that's called get places. So this is kind of how uh, Vuex works. We'll look at it more in a little bit. If we go back to app view, you'll see we're also using a router link. Um, this is for this top, um, top little uh, header. If you look at the bottom, it's probably hard to read, very bottom left, it has a link. That's where this link is taking us. Um, router information uh, is separated into um, a router file upon generation of the app. Um, and it's very straightforward. I like this a lot more than other router um, solutions, like for other apps, mainly because um, there's no like switches. Uh, we're not making a bunch of actual like links and then having them there. It's just kind of confusing to like conceptualize. This is literally just an array of components. We um, are using a new view three sort of create router. Um, function and then it just kind of handles it like we, we can do links we can add um we can do things programmatically but um this is really all you need for like the base setup which is nice going back to app.view um let's take a look what else might we need i'm also i'm pulling in styles from external styles so you won't see any styles anywhere else um and then i just want to have a little caveat i'm using errors and a loading spinner Ignore that. I'm not going to talk about it. It just was for my sanity. Um, cool. Awesome. Another note is if you have used Vue before, you're probably like, this looks just like old Vue. It does look like just old Vue, um, but we'll have a little surprise at the end. Um, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and dig in. Router view is kind of what I showed you before. It's um, these options in here right now. We just have one route that goes to slash. And that's what we were looking at. For components, we're really only using two components besides the loading one. Um, well, three, I guess, um, including a view. So home is our view component, V-I-E-W, not V-E-U. <laughs> um, so let's check that out. It's pretty basic. It's really just a holder for other child components, um, but it's doing some stuff with the uh, state management system. Here we've got map state. This is a fancy way to uh, get the properties from your state. You can also do something like, obviously this is not the correct syntax, but you can do like this dot um, store dot blah, whatever, um, to access your properties as well. You'll need to Google that. That's not exactly obviously correct, but um, this is not your only option. I'm also using map actions. Um, to pull all the actions I need in. Once again, you can dispatch actions using a different syntax if you so desire. Um, but let's take a look at how this works. Um, computed properties are properties that like, they have to, they have to do some sort of um, mutation to their um, data. So it's not just like straight up giving you the data. Um, so you might see things like, return to return at addition and it like adds the numbers up in, inside that would be a good spot for uh, a method like that and computed if you just needed to grab something really quickly or you needed to call it instantly and it's not going to be constantly uh updating and reactive you just you just want to call it when you call it and do the thing then um you would want to put those sort of functions into methods um you'll check out that map actions uh is bringing in the action get places. And then I'm calling get places when this function is created in this created um, life cycle method. There are other life cycle methods as well. Um, yeah, so get places, we'll call our API. Um, and then up here in our template, you can see that we've got an unordered list. And then we're just looping over all of the places that we get back from that API and rendering the place card. So let's check out the place card. Really all that's going on in here is it's got some styles on it. It's got an image and it's got a title. And you'll notice that we're not really doing much JavaScript in here. Really all we're saying is, hey, we're expecting a place info prop. And there are other ways to write props. If you're not using TypeScript, but you want some like extra safety, you can specify what kind of prop you are expecting. 
Um, cool. So once I, I said earlier, this app's not really doing anything yet. So let's make it do something. I'm going to check out my next branch. If I can remember what it's called. Uh, yeah, can see. I ask you a question? Sure. Will, will the view CLI generate any of the map code that you have there, like view generate action and stuff like that? Uh, no, uh, good question. No, it won't. Um, like, let's see. Oh gosh, I almost clicked the stopping share. This stuff you mean, Chad? Yeah, like if I wanted to create a new action and state item, they don't have a generation thing that, to help me with that? No, they don't. Um, they do generate like the store itself will just generate the basic create store hmm. with everything like state mutations um, and actions in it. And then you can kind of just add what you want from there. Um, it won't generate like the basic app that it generates doesn't have any state variable or state properties or mutations or actions. So there's just nothing to bring in. Um, but this is all um, should be all available on the Vuex docs. They're kind of confusing, but um, yeah, you're also totally welcome to just use the like the this dot dollar sign store or um, just directly accessing is totally fine too. Susan, where did you put like the get places? Where does that live? Oh, sure. This one? Yeah. It lives. So if we go to our store and our index, um, there's we've got like three properties on our like root object here, state, mutations, and actions. There's some other ones. It just lives in actions. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I wish that they would like if you chose UX in your generation, when you're generating in the CLI, it would like generate an example. Um, but unfortunately, you kind of just gotta go for it. <laughs> I will say that um, we were talking about coding garden earlier, all of like, well, there's a ton of view apps that I use as reference for um, this stuff. So it's a good place to, to check it out. Um, does that help Cheddar? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we are going to go to um, the next step, which is we want to be able to add a new place. Um, and I'm going to pick up the pace just a smidge now that we've explained the basics so that I can get through in 15 minutes and not make everybody else rush. Um, what we have added here is um, in our router, we have added a new route. Um, and so now we can, our app can go to places uh, slash new and it should have a new view. Um, to get there, we had to make a new component called add link. It is just a template. And that's totally okay. If you just have one little reusable piece of code that you want to make a component, totally fine. Doesn't have to have a style, doesn't have to have um, a script tag. Um, obviously, if you're not reusing this, it would be totally pointless to um, be a component, but uh, this is fine for now. So let's check out what happened. It made this, uh, this is the link in that component that you just saw. And I know you probably can't see it. Bottom left hand, you can see that it's going to take us to slash places slash new. Um, this will show our new form, which we'll take a look at now. Um, I will say that I do have a view file for this, V I E W, but really it's just a holder for this form. Um, it's doing some like a, it's doing this inline dispatch that I mentioned before. So instead of doing map actions, you can do something like this. Um, and then it's doing some programmatic router stuff. But other than that, it's really just a holder for a new place form. This is the biggest component we have. Um, pretty standard stuff if you know HTML. If not, um, basically the biggest thing here are we've got a lot of inputs. In view, we um, connect our data to the view using um, bindings such as uh, vModel. So it, if you take a look at this input, you can see that there's a V model right here that's called last visited. And this uh, matches up to my data down here, last visited. So if I update the form, like I type something into that input, my data is going to um, react to that. And it, it um, now it'll match up, which is pretty nice. Um, from there, like if I need to use the data, that has made it in here, I can um, manipulate it or I can send it off to wherever I need. Um, there's one other thing I want to mention in here, I think, ah, yes, you'll notice in here, um, there's an at sign and a click. Um, this at sign is shorthand for like, I think it's V on. I don't even use V on um, anymore, but just at click is like our, uh, 
it's like a Dom event. Um, so if you see that at sign, you can be pretty sure that there's some sort of uh, Dom event going on. Um, and then it just calls a method that you've got somewhere in your code below. Um, I want to, to pay, to bring close attention to um, how this is laid out in the um, JavaScript. We've got data, which is returning all of our properties. We've got uh, methods, which are uh, functions we can call like whenever we need. And you'll notice that they're grouped together like that. Later on, uh, I'm gonna show you a new way we can do that with view three. Um, let's see, did I miss anything? No, I think we're good. Let's move on because now we can add a place. We're gonna add Ohana Island Kitchen. Um, I don't know the last date, so I'm just gonna pick 0101-2018. Um, I'm gonna grab a couple of images. I, this thing keeps <laughs> getting in my way. Okay, uh, add an image. I should put a real alt instead of just nonsense. Um, outside Ohana Kitchen, Denver. Um, let's add one more. Isn't it beautiful? I just love their paintings. I like the wall painting. Uh, one more inside Ohana Kitchen, Denver. Awesome. And then we'll add that to the list. Um, shows up. Great, so that's working, but we still can't do anything else with it. So the last thing I'd like to do is just be able to show one place with details. So let's check that out. Um, what we are adding here, let me close these out. What we are adding here is, you guessed it, a new route. Um, so now we have a single place route and it's got this um, dynamic ID. Um, this single place component is our view and you can change the way this is laid out. It's, you, this is not set in stone. You don't ha even have to use the views components set up if the, your app doesn't really match up with that style. Um, once again, we've got just a bunch of um, HTML stuff. Um, we've got these shorthand bindings. So you'll see like the colon image URL. This is, um, this is saying, sorry, I said bindings. This is actually props. Like this is telling us, hey, Image URL is your prop. And then um, this is what I'm giving you for that prop. Um, I also didn't mention, if you're new to view, we use uh, handlebars for um, our sort of our data in the templates. So um, using this, these uh, kind of like a oh, magic wormhole is the way I like to think about it. Um, in here, we're, we've got a good computed example. Um, we're transforming the date that we input before um from what we got into something more readable and to do that like we want it to just happen all the time we don't want to call it um so we're using a computed method and it's mutating this data and returning this uh new format and then we're using it up here which is uh kind of nice let's see um and then check out down here i am using a another action so because I'm saying this dot get place, but there's no method and there's no computed method, um, like get place has to be coming from somewhere and it's coming from map actions. Um, I'm passing in a single ID because I only want one place. This action has been added to the store. Um, I didn't show you the add place, but it works the same way as the other ones. Um, let's see, get place. So once again, this lives in our actions, in our store. Um, it's just calling the API and saying, hey, give me this one place. Um, it's also doing a bunch of commits. You can mutate state directly in the um, actions if you so desire. I kind of like commits um, because it makes it very clear um, cut. But you'll check out if, if we are committing this mutation, which is going to change the state of the application, um, set place, we're giving it the place. We can go up here to our mutations, go through all of them and find set place and see that we're um, we're setting it to, uh, we're setting current place, which is a new um, property. You can have whatever properties you want on here, update them. And if you're familiar with React, once again, we are not having the copy state, it's just going, just living its life. Um, let's see, I think that's about it. Let's see what it looks like. If we click on Ohio, Ohana Island Kitchen, not a lot of information because we didn't give it a lot of information, but it is just a single view and you can see all of the images we added, which is pretty nice. 
Um, yeah, so one last surprise before I hand it off, I'm probably a little over time, is I want to show you all one of the new features that comes with view three is the composition API. And you might be thinking, I love you the way it is. I'm just going to use it the way it is. Fine, totally. That's what I'm probably going to do. But if you are a React kid, um, like I have to be, or had to be at work, you might be thinking, oh, I'd like something more similar to maybe React hooks. And this is very similar to React hooks. It feels familiar. Um, so let's check it out. What did I name it? Composition API? Nice. You'll notice that this works the same way. Nothing's changed. We can add new stuff. I'm not going to add another one, but um, it's the same application. We're just, we just have things laid out differently. And for an example, let's check out that new place form. This is what it looked like originally. It had the data, um, which was all of our properties that we wanted to save in local state. We had methods, which are the uh, functions we want to call on demand. Um, well, now we can lay it out a bit more like React hooks. Um, and it looks more like this. Check out this setup function. Basically, what's happening is I'm making my local state here. I am making computed properties here or methods here um, instead of having them in their own sections, which is pretty nice. So these are our new um, properties or local state um, properties. Uh, this submit is equiv equivalent to our original submit um, up here, uh, which I didn't dig into for time's sake, but know that they're basically the same thing. Um, it just looks different. I'm not saying, hey, this is a method. Hey, this is computed. Um, I'm just saying this is submit and it knows that it's a, it's a method. Um, I've got another one here and then I'm returning all of this for the component to use, which is pretty nice. Um, another example, I think maybe place image. No, let's see. Place card? No, there's another one somewhere. Single place. Ah, here it is. Here was our original for single place. Um, we've got our map states. We've got our map actions. We've got that last visited format, last visited formatted um, computed. Um, well, now it looks like this. Um, I'm bringing in these hooks, we'll call them, like use store and use route. Um, 